now tuned into the greatest. The Run with Manny Wilson Podcast. The Run with Manny Wilson Podcast. The best sports podcast there is. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson, all the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers and headphones. I appreciate you tuning in to the first interactive sports podcast, you know, a community that makes sure your voice is heard. So if you hear something you agree with, you disagree with, you like or you dislike, go ahead, shoot us a quick take. 219-413-9405. And of course, we will play your take back on our next episode. And shout out to SeaGeek for sponsoring this episode. Get $20 off your first ticket purchase when you use the promo code The Run Podcast. Now, this code can only be applied for first-time users on the mobile app or website. So I don't know about you, but NFL season is still going strong, so go ahead, create that account, and then use that promo code to save $20 off your ticket purchase. Anyway, speaking of NFL season, there's a lot going on, too, in the sports world because we got the NBA season in full effect. They're, they're, they're going to the in-season tournament right now. Um, it's a lot of things going on. Teams are getting upset. Teams are winning. Some of the bad teams are turning good. A lot of these different things. Um, But I got to bring attention to a team that I love dearly. So, of course, let's focus in. And I'm not going to lie. You should know who that is by now, the Detroit Pistons. Um, Let's bring it back over there to Detroit, um, all the way from, you know, Detroit to Chicago. So let's stay in Detroit for a little bit. Um, And I'm not going to lie. So they just lost to the Bucs, 127-120. They lost in overtime. Giannis had to put up 59 points to beat this team. Um, Granted, there was no Damian Lillard, but Pistons were also missing guys, too. Um, no Hardaway Jr., no Ivy. Stewart got tossed in the third. Um, so it was a lot going on. But I, I'm not going to lie because I, I, I'm about to get on here and praise the Pistons just a little bit. But I'm kind of scared because every time I talk about the Pistons in a good way, they decide to start playing worse and worse. So I, I'm a little scared. Not going to lie. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to do this without giving them too much praise so they don't start playing too bad because I swear it happens every single time. So lately... Pistons, they won four of their last seven matchups at this point. They lost eight games total. And the one thing I do love when I'm seeing so far this early on in the season from the Pistons is that they have actually have a brand of basketball that they're playing. So now it's not a Pistons team who's slept on, who's bad, who's not going to really play hard. They got one guy you got to worry about. Obviously, Kate is still the guy you got to worry about. But the thing with the Pistons that make this brand of basketball special and that they've actually established is the fact that they have an identity. They play hard. They play tough. They're going to be physical. They're scrappy. And this team is fast. They're small, but they're fast. Oh, my gosh. So I'm loving that they actually have an identity in what type of basketball they play. Um, And they finally added some shooters. We see those guys are shooting the blood out the ball. The other night, man, Malik Beasley really was lighting it up from the floor, hit over four three-pointers. And, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr., he's been knocking it down. Um, We've seen Ivy take another approach at shooting the ball. Kate has been shooting the ball pretty decent so far. Um, So I'm loving what I'm seeing from this team. Um, The the thing I dislike, the thing I dislike about the Pistons so far in these first few games that that I've watched and early on in the season is the fact that we've been in a lot of dogfights lately. So Pistons, they had to play the Miami Heat. That game went down to the wire. The Hawks went down to the wire. The Hornets went down to the wire. Um, the Bucks just went down to the wire in overtime. So it's a lot of games coming down to the wire. And the thing that's disappointing me in these down to the wire games is the fact that Pistons continue to turn the ball over. It's some sloppy turnovers. And a lot of people put it all on Kay Cunningham. But it's not just Kay Cunningham that's turning the ball over in these late game situations. Um, I I get Cade is turning the ball over, but also he's hitting some of the biggest shots that we've seen and making some of the biggest plays that we've seen that's helped us win these games. So it's like a give and take, but I'm okay with the Pistons losing because Giannis dropped 59 points. I'm okay with the Pistons losing because Tyler Hero hit a big shot or something like that. I'm okay if a team legitimately outplays us toward the end of the game. They're making big shots and they're getting stops and stuff. We can't get anything to fall. I'm okay if the Pistons lose in that way. One of the things I cannot accept from the Pistons, though, is if they're losing games because they're turning the ball over in crucial moments. That's the thing that really hurts me. That's the thing where I'm like, all right, this team got to get it together because – 
Like, it's one thing when you're up 10 points and you let a team come back and you still have the momentum, but you flip the ball multiple times and now the other team has the momentum. They're scoring. You give them extra possessions to score the ball. That's the part that hurts. That's what hurts. So I I would say that's the area they have to clean up in. Um, If they're seriously looking to become a playoff team, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people right now are saying like, oh, Pistons, they're going to make the play in. They're going to make the play in. Yeah, I I feel like they're going to make the play in too. But let's be honest, bro. To me, that's expected that they make the play in in this trash Eastern Conference, bro. Like, let's be real, man. Let's raise the standards just a little bit higher. And let's just say playoffs. Let's get to the playoffs because play in in this Eastern Conference is easy. If the Pistons don't make it to the top 10 seed or a, a 1 through 10 seed, come on, man. That's just sad. Any team that don't make it at least 10 in the Eastern Conference or Western Conference don't deserve to be there. Like, let's be real, because especially in the East, man, uh, because like (laughs) these teams is not even not even on anything significant right now. 76ers, a bunch of injuries going on. The Knicks is just the Knicks. I mean, they're they're going to be a top 18 for sure. I think so down the line. Bucks, yeah, no Doc Rivers. They have no coach, no groove. They're just literally out there freestyling, letting Giannis play basketball. Um, The Celtics, 100 percent certified. Can agree with that for sure. He been wishy-washy. Cavs, they're balling for sure. But out of those six teams that I've just named, you still got four extra slots for teams to to make something happen. So I, I'm just a, I, I'm like, no, nah, man, playoffs got to be the new standard here. Uh, and I think above all, as, as long as the Pistons can continue to limit turnovers, and if they limit turnovers late game, then they'll be all right. Because right now, this turnover ratio, it may not look like it on paper. It may not look like, oh, they're they're putting a bunch of turnovers out there on paper. But above all, when you look at the teams that they've been playing in the past four games, they've had more turnovers than each opponent. They've had more. They've had more than 18 turnovers in four in three out of the last four matchups. So it's kind of crazy. You, you look at the numbers, like, statistically, they look like they're doing pretty decent. They're not the worst team in the NBA when it comes to turnovers. But above all, you, you got to clean that part up, especially, you know, as the season continues to go on, as the season continues to progress. So right now it's early. A lot of teams still finding that groove. A lot of teams trying to figure out the system and the game plan offensively and strategizing against other teams' game plans. So, you know, I, I want to give a lot of leeway Right now, they they won more games than they did last year at this point already. So that's a huge plus. But um, let's just continue to keep it solid. (laughs) Please, let's continue to keep it solid. Please don't let them start playing bad. Please don't start playing bad since I done talked about the Pistons and gave them a little praise. All right. (laughs) Anyway, look, man, hey, we got some news coming up in just a sec. So hang tight. Um, Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. It's halftime, and then we'll be right back. All right, let's get into it, man. Some news for the run. Let's start off with some college football, actually. So college football, you got a couple of matchups. That's going to be nice uh, for this weekend. I think it's week, what, 12 for college football. So season's going on. Um, Ohio State, they're going to be taking on Northwestern. Texas, they'll be playing Arkansas. Colorado, they're ranked in the top 25. This is going to be a good matchup between them and Utah. They got the early game. Alabama, Playing Mercer, not really sure who that is, but they're nine and one, so seems like a small school that could cause some damage. Um, I'll give Penn State over Purdue. They play each other today, or not today. Um, they play each other this weekend, come Friday or Saturday. Days all off. Oh my gosh. Um, other than that, LSU and Florida you got Missouri, South Carolina, Oregon, and Wisconsin should be good. Tennessee and Georgia is going to be a big game. That's a prime time game. Um, I'll definitely be watching that game, um, and I'll probably keep an eye on the Alabama game, too. And I want to check BYU out as well because they're sitting at number six right now, and they're still undefeated. So I- I'm expecting to see them beat Kansas as they play that late game this Saturday night. Uh, however, let's go ahead and keep going with the different rankings that's here. I know I gave them to you earlier this week, but just as a reminder, Oregon is at number one. Ohio State is at number two. Texas is at number three, Penn State number four, Indiana is at number five right now. Indiana is still undefeated, Oregon is still undefeated, Um, another team that's undefeated, BYU, and then that is 
the last of the top 12 teams that's undefeated so far in college football. Um, maybe that can change this weekend. Who knows? But you got to look out for them undefeated teams because a lot of people are so quick to say, oh, they got an easy schedule. They're not playing anybody. But I'm like, bro, to keep that momentum rolling week after week, to win 11 straight games, 9 straight games, 10 straight games, that's no easy work, bro. That's no easy work. If it was easy, you would see a lot of different teams have those same records. But for, for with that being said, it's only four of them in the top 25 or five of them in the top 25 because Army is in there too. But um, anyway, man, look, some NFL games that's going to be good this weekend. Um, I definitely want to go ahead and bring that up because we got a lot of different things happening in the NFL. Chiefs are still undefeated right now. Um, and man, nobody can seem to beat them. And it's really looking kind of realistic that the Chiefs may actually go on um, to be the first team to have an undefeated season all the way through like 17 weeks, 18 weeks, because man, they play the Bills. If they beat the Bills this weekend, I'm pretty confident that the Chiefs are going to end up, you know, not losing a game this season. Because after that, they got the Panthers, Raiders, Chargers, Browns, Texans, and then the Steelers will be a good one. But then the Broncos once again. So we'll see, man. But the Chiefs still undefeated. They're rolling strong right now. And shout out to them, man. That team has been getting it done a little bit by luck, but still 9-0 at the end of the day. Um, another good game I'm going to definitely watch is my Atlanta Falcons. They play the Broncos. Um, they got to beat the Broncos to move to 7-4. and four. Broncos are sitting at 500, exactly at 5-5. Five and five. Um, a, a big rivalry game is happening between the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. The Bears did fire their offensive coordinator. So people are hoping that we see a new look for this offense um, led by Kayla Williams on the field. Um, Lions play the Jaguars. Should be an easy win for Detroit. Vikings and the Titans should be easy for the Vikings. Dolphins, Raiders. I'm expecting the Dolphins to win this game. Rams and the Patriots. I'm going to pick the Rams to win that right there. Then the Browns and the Saints. I think the Saints are going to win this game, but this is kind of a matchup of the Saris. Then you got the New York Jets and the Indiana Colts. I'm going to go Colts to win this game by surprise. Ravens, Steelers. Let's go Steelers to win this game. This is about to be a battle here. Then you got Seahawks and 49ers. Oh, man, this is a battle right here. But I think I'm going to go ahead and give the dub to the 49ers because they are at home and they have Christian McCaffrey back. Um, Bengals play the Chargers. Bengals are going to win that, in my opinion. Just an early bowl prediction. And then the Texans and the Cowboys. I'm going to give that dub to the Texans um, on Monday Night Football. And then tonight for Thursday Night Football, you got the Commanders versus the Philadelphia Eagles. And I'm going with the Philadelphia Eagles to win this matchup here, man. So I, I know the Commanders are rolling. Everybody can see that the Commanders are rolling. They're a solid team led by Jaden Daniels a quarterback who has really like brought a lot of hype to that team right now. And as, as he should, he's been playing good. The man has been balling. Um, he's got over 2000 yards already got nine touchdowns already about to have more than nine touchdowns in this game against the Eagles. And, and, you know, I think it's something for the commanders to be hype about. However, I'm picking the Eagles to win this matchup because they've been rolling as a team. Jalen hurts has been rolling himself at quarterback. Um, they're on a five game winning streak as a team. They've scored 28 or more points in four of the last five games that they played. So Eagles, that offense is rolling. And I know the Commanders is good. The Commanders are going to make it a good game. But I can't put my faith in the Commanders because they have not beat a team over 500 just yet. If you look at their schedule, and 7-3 looks great. They played a lot of teams. Any team they played that's over 500, they they've lost. So I can't put my faith in, a, in the Commanders to beat a team that's above 500, and that's actually been playing well in the Philadelphia Eagles. So I'm going Jalen Hurts and the Eagles to win this tonight. Um, I haven't put anything down to, to solidify, and I probably won't put it down to solidify that the Eagles going to match it up. But this is, this is who I think is going to win because – Man, Commanders are good, but Eagles, man, they've been locked in. They've been locked in so far. So I'm going with them to win this. Anyway, look, I'm going to say this, dog. I'm a, I, I'll go here. I'll go here. And I'll switch it up just a little bit because although the Commanders are good, I, I just want to take a look into their schedule so you can understand what I mean by, like, they haven't really played anybody. 
like that's worth being super hype about winning in the nfl is hard and i understand any win is a good win in the nfl but i just want to look and explain the teams that they've been playing so far so you can kind of catch my drift of what i'm talking about because they played the buccaneers early on the opening season they lost then the giants the Bengals. The Cardinals, Bengals were still under 500. They're still under 500 right now as we speak. The Cardinals, Browns, Ravens, they lost that game against the Ravens, Panthers, Bears, Giants, Steelers, and they lost against the Steelers. So these teams, like like the Panthers, the Browns, the Bears, who don't have it figured out, that like it's it, to me, it's it's a little wild. The Cardinals were under 500 at the time. It's it's hard to give a lot of credit. When they're not beating teams. And this whole scenario in a way with the commanders being so good right now, it kind of reminds me of the Dolphins from last year. Last year, the Dolphins were a hot team, had a lot of hype around them, but yet they they didn't play anybody. Anytime they faced a team that was above 500, they lost. And that's exactly what the commanders are doing right now. So that's a huge reason why I'm going for the Eagles. And and I look at the Eagles schedule. They haven't had the toughest schedule either. I, I will admit they haven't been playing the toughest teams either but and they've been early on in the season it was kind of some sloppy football it was some some struggling football but you know the way they've been playing lately within the past three to four weeks taking advantage of these bad teams and these bad matchups that they've been playing I can I can I feel more comfortable you know putting my faith in the Eagles to actually win this game so um, I'm gonna go I'm gonna leave it there um other than that man look I appreciate you for tuning in Um, I'm excited for this Thursday night matchup. I'm going to cook up a parlay. (laughs) I'm not going to share it because I don't like people telling my bets. (laughs) I just feel like if you lose after something I've told you about, man, I don't know. I feel bad. I feel bad about it. (laughs) So I'm not going to do that at all. Um, One of the last things, too, is, you know, this this is going to be a fun game. But I'm going to leave you all with a positive note. The positive note here is just going to be work hard and then set a new standard to work even harder. Like when you're trying to accomplish something, sometimes that same old routine don't get it done. And sometimes you do need to, to spice up that routine and crank it up another notch. So that's why I say work hard and then set a new standard to work even harder because eventually you're going to get there. You keep staying consistent. You keep working hard. Eventually you're going to get there. So I'm going to just leave it at that, man. Other than that, look, man, I appreciate y'all for tuning in. I appreciate you for kicking it with me. Um, leave us a quick take on our voicemail line, 219-413-9405, especially if you're about to check out this Thursday night football matchup uh, between the Eagles and the Commanders. Um, let me hear your thoughts on that game because, of course, we're going to talk about it come Monday. Um, so, yeah, shoot us a quick take, and, of course, we'll play it back on our next episode come next week. But for some of y'all, it's going to be the weekend. For some of y'all, it's just a Thursday like it is for me. But whenever you check this out, man, I appreciate it. Of course, send this to a cousin, a brother, an aunt, a niece, a nephew, a co-worker, a friend, a spouse, your side partner, your side piece. Even though you shouldn't be having no side pieces, I'm not condoning that at all. Um, <laughs> I'm going to leave y'all with that, man. I've been talking too much already. So I'll be out, man, uh, later on next week. And I will see y'all later on come Monday. So, all right. I'll see y'all so on and so on and so on. <clears throat>